Time to pay some bills. Yo, oh, what's good, everybody? We got a special video, man. We got famous bodybuilders then and now. Did I say it right? Bodybuilders then and now. Now, I'm going to go ahead and warn you guys, all right? Everybody about to see this video is natural. And um, it's just creatine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hope you guys get my jokes. Uh, but um, I'm going to just say something before we get to the video, man. Um, I got no issue with people, you know, uh, who, who own a juice or whatever it is, man. I just got an issue with the people who claim they're not on it. And then they sell products and things like that. And they tricking and manipulating people to thinking that you can obtain their physique naturally by buying their supplements. I cannot stand it. It's all over on IG, all over in, in the bodybuilding industry. That's the only thing I hate. I am not against it. You know what I mean? Because I know, listen, y'all, look. If I get, whenever I get to about 50 years old, bro, you know, my test level's down. Man, my thing can't get up, man. I don't feel young, man. I'm not going on the dock, though, bro. Real talk. Why? Why do I want to feel old and look old? And I'm just going to use him to pee? Come on, man. Listen, y'all. You feel me? But um, let's go get the video, man. Bodybuilding is a truly unique sport. It takes years of intense weight training, Facts. super strict dieting, Facts. and more bronzer than a Kardashian makeup tutorial to make it to the top. Facts. Done right, these titans can become famous for their massively muscled bodies. But time comes for a story. Yes, Not huh? even bodybuilders stay in shape forever. Right side? From age and injuries to the drastic consequences of steroid use. It's time to remember some of the world's most famous retired bodybuilders and see what they look like. I do be paying attention in the bodybuilding industry, yo. Um, it's fascinating, yo. You know, you can learn a lot of uh, jewels from it. We're starting off really, really big. But I was trying how you say his name, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Only Arnold <laughs> Schwarzenegger. Training hard since the age of just 15, Arnie was determined to become the greatest bodybuilder in the world, and this meant winning a coveted Mr. Olympia title. Established in 1965 and still running today, this annual competition sees the biggest and best professional bodybuilders Man, from all over the world. Man, and you know what's crazy, yo? Out on the main if you look stage. at bodybuilding now, now compared to what was back then, second. like this is why I say, bro, how you don't believe in, I ain't gonna see evolution. The creatine is evolving now. <laughs> you know, now you see bodybuilders with the gut out now, you know what I mean? The abs are way out here like they're pregnant with abs, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's crazy, man. Mr. Olympia debut in 1969, but then returned in 1970 to take first place, making him the youngest ever Mr. Olympia winner at just 23. He won the prestigious title a staggering seven times during the 1970s, competing at weights ranging from 225 pounds to 250 pounds Dude, with an amazing 57-inch chest and 22-inch arms. But Jeez. these weren't all natural gains. Arnie has been very open about his use of anabolic steroids. Creatine. A type of performance enhancing <laughs> drug that increases muscle mass and decreases fat to improve performance and appearance. Train, Although huh? this was back before steroids were banned by many sports associations in the 1990s. Nevertheless, Arnie's astonishing appearance won him many movie roles, including 80s classics like Conan the Barbarian. And listen, what this is what I've been saying right here, y'all. Listen, if, put like this, if my job, if I was an actor, God, there's so many leading actors in Hollywood right now that do the stuff. And I don't blame them. If I'm getting paid, if, 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 if I'm getting paid to come out here and look the best as I possibly can for a role, a temporary role, and they tell me, hey, Cash, you got to gain 25 pounds of most of our next year. You got a, a leading role. And you get XX amount. Bro, that's an investment within yourself and within your business. You know what I mean? Like, I, 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 that's how I look at it, y'all, you know? And the Terminator, he was unstoppable. Well, almost. 
In 1997, I'm not, no, I'm not on no juice, you know, it's not my, I don't have to, to reduce the intensity of his training. Oh, wait, then, you know, he took office I only hoop, as the bro. governor of I'm not California hoop. from 2003 to 2011, so maintaining mega muscles was no longer his main priority. As such, the paparazzi have spent years trying to capture his declining physique, but at the grand old age of 74, you can see Arnie's still in amazing shape. Still look good for 74, years bro. after retiring from bodybuilding, and he still regularly pumps iron in his home gym, pulling heavy-looking T-bar rows and 140 pounds. But this dude pound was a mayor, bro. Curls. A mayor. I don't know if still is, but I a mayor? That. What? From an act, a bodybuilder to acting well, to mayor? You might not be able to lift weights uh, like Grandpa Schwarzenegger, but you can test your strength against those like and subscribe buttons down below. Did you get them? Great. Now, which male mountain have we got next? Ronnie Coleman. Few bodybuilders can compete with Arnie's seven Mr. Olympia wins. Though there's one man who that can give him a squat, run bro. for his money. He Ronnie Coleman, aptly nicknamed the King, hasn't just matched Arnie's record, he's beaten it. With an amazing eight Mr. Olympia wins under his belt, he's tied with the legendary Lee Haney for the most Mr. Olympia wins in history. And it's not hard to see yeah, And a lot of this is due to genetics. Fine. To let you with guys a know, a lot of it is. 300 pounds, you know, some people, they can go get on the, the creatine biceps. juice. This man was and a monster. And they still won't look as good as some people natural. However, genetics. like Arnie, Ronnie you know, just the muscle separation steroids and things like that, man. Because he was desperate to be the best, but that came with its own consequences. Yeah, he's in a wheelchair now, his bro. It's crazy. He's still be pushing, bro. Respect to Ronnie, bro. To the absolute limit, leaving Ronnie with a litany of serious injuries, such as herniated discs and severe spine compression. By 2020, at 56 years old, he'd undergone not one, not two, but 13 separate surgeries on his spine, as well as a hip replacement. The damage was so. Let me tell you tonight. If you're on the juice, y'all, you come to the weight room, your veins popping, busting out, you know, all of a sudden, we know, y'all. We all know. If you come to the exact same gym every time, your, your skin look like paper. We, we just don't say anything. Yeah. And I'm just going to wait until you put on that sweater and that sweater start looking too big for you. Okay, you got to get off the cycle. But we, and it's, <laughs> I tell you right now, bro, if you're on the stuff, bro, hardcore, bro, you doing combos with it, bro, people in the weight room, do, we, we know, we expect, bro. We just don't say anything. But kudos to you. Some people need that motivation. Get in the weight room and stay in the weight room. I'm not hating on you. Do your thing, play boy. You feel me? But don't come over here and try to hog, you know, the bench press, man. You want to get loud. Get up. And just sit there for like 10 minutes and just, you know, got about four plates on each side, man, showing off. You know what I mean? And hitting it once. You know, just sitting there, you know, all the, all the ladies looking and everything. Bro, we're like, we know, we know. Extensive that doctors say that. he'd never walk again. So what goes up? But it'd take more than that to down. keep this king down. Videos posted on social media show that he needs a little assistance to stand and walk, but he's still pumping iron down at the gym like the champ he Boy, is. 13, you know, I see you. to train as intensely as he once did, he currently weighs in closer to the 200 pounds mark. But most of that is still muscle. This, Would you bro. expect anything less from the king? Jay Cutler. Hot on the Jay heels Cutler, he's of still Arnie and to Ronnie is the mighty Jay Cutler. I see him in the gym a couple now, times. this four-time Mr. Olympia winner still has look never been shy of showing though. what it takes to get he, ready He don't look like the Hulk right, like right there, but he still looks good. days a week, training for hours on end, to dangerously dehydrating himself before shows to give his muscles a leaner appearance. In 2005, all this work helped him drop a tremendous amount of body fat reducing his weight from 283 pounds to 265. Do you guys know the level of discipline to get here? How much you gotta eat a day, lean food, 
with barely with no sauce, low sodium salt, it's 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 miserable. It really is miserable to look this clean and that big and still pack on muscle. If you know, you know, bro. It people just think, oh, they're just going to the back. They put the needle on their you know, on their ass and they just grow big. Bro, it's a lot more discipline that goes behind it, man. A lot of cardio going on in the morning, in the evening, and at nighttime. A lot of eating going on. It, it's so much eating to where you feel like you want to throw it, but you got to put it on. You got to put it on. It's crazy, man. In just four it's crazy. weeks, I, I respect this salute. extreme cutting process is crucial to many bodybuilders as it helps them maintain their hulking physiques while showing off that all-essential muscle definition. But less than two months later, once the show was over, Jay was back up to 293 pounds. This is called I'm at 193 right now. Weight, That's crazy. where bodybuilders take a rest from their punishing pre-competition regimes. They get to eat more, drink more, and don't hit the gym as intensely. However, this shocking image appeared on the internet around 2018, apparently showing an unrecognizable <laughs> Jay in his off-season. Fortunately, this was just the oh, they got, they got to be photoshopped dog. folks who try to make Jay's way go like that, that more chub than chunk. In reality, he carried his almost 300 pound frame like this, sporting ever so slightly more body fat. Today though, at 48 years old, Jay's maintained most of his monstrous mass even though he's retired. He may not be as big as he once was, but if I look anything like that when I'm approaching 50, I'll be delighted. Dave Palumbo. Dave Palumbo Dave is a name well Palumbo. known. Boy, look like the boy. boy. Bro, if I get this Pokemon card and just do that, you gonna bro, you gonna bleed death. Bro, look how paper thin this dude. Bro, look at the veins in the dude's leg, bro. Bro, how you walk around with this? In the bodybuilding world, but not for the best of reasons. Oh my god. At his gosh. heaviest, this five foot nine performer weighed in at more than 300 pounds and competed in national US events from 1990 to 2004. His seriously shredded bod displayed some truly massive features, most notably his huge gut. Oh man, that gut says a lot, y'all. Tell you, the, the body, look at bodybuilders, how they were back then, how they are now. I think people are talking about like the new thing everybody uses. I'm not accusing, you know, he, he probably just used creatine. Um, think of HGH, you know what I mean? The human growth hormone thing. You know, I, I heard like the ears grow, the shoes grow, everything grow. Even your yeah grow. Yeah. Um, and your gut grow. This is believed to be a side effect of an anabolic agent called human growth hormone, or HGH. Or curtain. A substance banned by many sports. It stimulates the growth of tissue in the body, increasing muscle mass, and artificially your shoes, bro, your shoes grow, man. Your shoe size. Excuse but me. When I say tissue, I mean all tissue. Everything, including the stuff in your organs. Doctors have observed athletes who abuse HGH, and they can suffer from enlarged hearts and inflated bowels, the latter of which is believed to give the gut that strangely swollen appearance. Although they don't know what causes it for sure, so it's currently just a theory. Gonna but grow, with man. one of the most sizable guts in the bodybuilding world, the condition was coined palumbalism. Not the title I reckon Dave wanted to win. Oh man, y'all, one time I was in the gym, bro. What gym was it? I was going to go gym, bro. It was this dude, bro. I'm talking about big, big dude, bro. I'm talking about he was swole, bro. But, bro, I promise you, bro, it looked like he was eight months pregnant. It was so bad that he never wore a muscle shirt. He wore like a tank, like, you know, the, the, the Nike cutoff ones, you know, they're kind of thick. To try, you know, to try to showcase, you know, this right here out, you know, he could not hold it, man. It, bro, it looked like his, his water about to burst at any moment. It, bro, it was down bad. I couldn't. Every time I looked at him, bro, you know, I just, I just, I'm looking at the gut, bro. Kind of. <sighs> he stopped competing in 2004, man. but continued to work out at a lower intensity in the years after. 
This saw his mammoth gains drop over the years. Oh, who is you? And then, at 53 years old, he proudly showed off his surprisingly flat stomach. That's right, his belly busting bulge had completely gone. See, that's what, bro. That's why I fear, bro, when I get old, y'all. You know what I mean? Um, you know, when you must, you know, like if you get too big and then you stop eating as much, and you go down, bro, and your skin look like that, bro. Like, uh, it's gonna happen to everybody, man. But, sheesh. They're like, you know, you ever had a balloon? You know, you blew it up. You ever had a used, you ever had a used rubber? You know, you put it off, you about to put it in the back, you know, in, in uh, <laughs> the toilet. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, that wrinkly thing. <laughs> While the verdict is still I'm out, I'm drinking wine, y'all, exactly man. Causes I'm, up, I'm still celebrating my big win with Cam. Job of I got like three more days to celebrate that I'm back on the grind. All while looking really healthy. What a hero. I took a week off. Tom Platts. You might know him as the wasted. Golden Eagle or the Quad Father, but the real name of this thick thighed powerhouse is Tom Platts. Between 1979 and 1986, Tom competed in seven Mr. Olympia events usually placing high in the top 10. His thighs were the envy of many bodybuilders, measuring in with a circumference of four inches at their biggest. That's about the same as the average waist of a regular man. Bro, Tom what? Tom became famous for his hilariously intense training exercises, which pushed every last muscle in his body to the limit. He was so built that in 1993, at 38 years old, he could squat an impressive 525 pounds 23 times. Fast forward to 2015, when Tom was 60 years old, and he could still be found down at the gym pumping iron. Now, he as we get older, he our ability good. to develop and maintain muscle mass decreases because our body's natural production of testosterone slows down. I'm not gonna on the doctor though. Oh no. I can't afford it, man. Why not, bro, man? Y'all, listen, bro. I think Joe Rogan even still, he talked about his podcast. He do it. Look, bro. If I'm that, bro, if I'm 50, 45 plus, why not? Your wife will be happy. Testosterone happy is wife, essential to synthesizing on, the protein bro. that builds muscle. Oh, you about to go so around, perfectly you know, look like a, a deflated tire? Come on, man. amounts of muscle as you age. But it seems Tom's Jeez. body didn't get that memo. Because at 65 years old, he still boasted some seriously shredded thighs. Man, they don't call him the quad father for nothing. Today, as he approaches 70 years old, you can still find him busting his butt down at the gym, proving that you can years keep old, your bro. physique That's if crazy. you put the work in. Flex Wheeler. Flex by name and flex by nature, Kenneth Flex Wheeler is an American bodybuilding legend. Competing in more than 30 professional bodybuilding competitions between 1993 and 2017, He's widely regarded as one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. While he started out all natural, he too turned to steroids to get an edge on the competition. But it wasn't an easy ride. In interviews, he described how the steroids saw him gain a whopping 30 pounds in just a month. That's nearly a pound a day. Though he competed at a huge 240 pounds with incredibly impressive 31-inch thighs, it wasn't enough to snag him a Mr. Olympia title, leaving him in second and third on many occasions. That's pretty impressive, considering that Flex was also diagnosed with severe kidney issues back in 1990. I tell you this right here, bro. To my experience, being around the NBA, you know, doing NBA, reactions, you know, and players, talking to players, being cool with them, and being in rap bodybuilders, away from things like that. I'd rather lose a championship than lose at a, on stage. If y'all would know what these athletes put themselves to, the level of dehydration, um, their diet, their discipline, their, their sacrifices, 
is so much more than you, you know that your typical NBA player or football player. You know, you know, we like you talking about, you know, the, the mama mentality. D guys got a different mentality, y'all. I'm telling you. Do your research, man. You're gonna come back and understand it. When you go to compete, buy nothing, bro. It's tough. This might have been linked to the steroids he was taking, but doctors never confirmed this. From that point on, he competed completely like, drug free. It is he literally 24 hours you worry about to die. You measure your sleep. You measure how much media you intake. Really you irritate, you take a dump. You're looking at how much you take. You take a dump in the toilet. Then I just shit out, you know, this whole meal. I'm telling you, bro. As in, like, I'm getting ready for a championship. You know, I'm taking put shots up in the gym, got my trainer. You know, I'm going to the club. You know, I ain't got a drink or, you know, do nothing else. But, you know, they can't do all that. Circulation issues stemming from further kidney problems. They ain't a song. He had no choice but to have part of his right leg amputated in 2019. But this hasn't stopped the now 56-year-old flex. And that's gonna Even without a leg, guys, he hey, still I I makes it lose down to the gym to a pump iron and, and NBA, stay fit. Now competing. that's what you call a massive flex. Because of how flex. much work it is to get on that stage. And Paul Dillette. When it comes to photos, I respect you bodybuilders can strike a pose like Paul DeLette. Back check, check in his too, heyday you know. of the 1990s, this guy pulled down all the stops, from posing in sunglasses to weightlifting in braces. God, I wish I looked that good in suspenders. With a top competing weight of 285 pounds, Paul took part in more than 40 professional bodybuilding tournaments from 1991 to 2006. He ranked highly in almost all of them, though he never reached beyond fourth in the all-important Mr. Olympia. However, in 1988, he revealed in an interview he'd started taking steroids to improve his physique. Duh! Including that previously mentioned human growth hormone. Photos of Paul also show him sporting that suspiciously bulging belly in later competitions. But that was nothing compared to this belly he gained back in the 2000s. Published in a variety of magazines, Paul showed off a very different physique, with his bulging muscles replaced by a large gut and man boobs. That's it. Many Bill's people been paid to the conclusion that Paul had just stopped taking steroids, as this can lead to hormone fluctuations that force the body to retain an excessive amount of body fat. But he later revealed he'd gotten out of shape on purpose, only to bounce back to his regular ripped self a few months later. This was all for some before That's and after crazy. photos that were then used in supplement advertisements, which Paul assumingly made a lot of money from. As of 2019 though, at 56 years old, Paul's clearly stopped working out as much and really has lost most of his ball. It was been paid. Life is admit, good. He can still really pull off a pair of sunglasses. Nicole Bass. Just like men, female bodybuilders are no match for the power of time. Something bodybuilder and WWE superstar Nicole Bass once. This girl by the like mine, bro. You guys know what, what, what I heard, man? Correct me if I'm wrong. I heard it is unnatural for a woman to have abs because a woman naturally is supposed to have a certain amount of body fat um, thick dude, dude for reproduction. I don't know. Don't, don't quote me on that, but let me know. You know, I probably got to Google that, whatever it is. But that's, that's why I heard, you know, a gym rat was telling me. Demonstrated. She made her bodybuilding debut back in 1985, taking national competitions by storm and making it into the top 15 of Miss Olympia in 1990. Well, look at her shoulders! At oh my gosh! Two and 240 pounds, she really stood out next to her other competitors. What? The 240 pounds, she really That's a lot stood of out next to her other competitors. But as she trained, something about Nicole changed. As toned and muscular as she was she in the late 80s, by the 90s, her physique suddenly became much bulkier. And there was nothing natural about it. As you probably guessed, Nicole had been abusing anabolic steroids. While they can help anyone gain muscle mass artificially, they can also increase the production of bone in the body particularly around the... Oh, look at... I'm about to say... Look at that structure right there. 
jawline, which gave her a more rugged appearance. But looks aside, at her peak, Nicole was so impressively stacked that she gave many male bodybuilders a run for their money. Sadly though, steroids can have devastating, long-term consequences that are more than just aesthetic abnormalities. In 2006, Nicole was admitted to hospital after suffering from steroid-related pancreatitis. With doctors advising her not to train intensely, Nicole lost most of the muscle mass the steroids Oh uh, man, ain't never down here for now. We start pumping them cigarettes in that, in that throat, in that esophagus. Oh man. It's a lot of stress, man. Louder to gain. Then, sadly, at just 52 years old, she passed away from complications oh, following Rest a stroke peace, and heart attack. Health issues that are greatly increased by steroid amazing, use. Though. I guess it proves that she even though steroids tone, though. can provide I know, a lot of gains, there are some very her. ugly consequences hidden beneath. I'm just trying. Listen, uh, so help me out, y'all. So I'm trying to find like um. A bodybuilder, a woman bodybuilder who looked bigger than me uh, in L.A. to do a video with. Um, I think that'd be interesting, you know, do a workout with a uh, ILBB pro, that you call them now, you know, whatever it is. Uh, so if you guys know anybody, you know, probably your girl, probably, you know, <laughs> she probably got you in a chokehold like this. Who you watch? Who you watch? You know, but uh, <laughs> real tall on your side. But uh, yeah, you know anybody, uh, hit, my, hit my DMs, y'all. Really try to do a collab uh, on that, man. I think it'd be very interesting. Lou Ferrigno. You might not recognize this next guy unless he's slathered in green paint, but Lou Ferrigno was famous long before he played the Hulk. He started training to become a bodybuilder at just 13 years old in an attempt to look like his childhood role models, Hercules and the Hulk. By 1973, at the age of just 22, he won his first prestigious Mr. Universe title and regularly battled Arnie for the top spot in many bodybuilding competitions. Lies right here, genetics too, y'all. A gargantuan six foot five and weighing over three hundred and fifteen like, pounds. Kenny, he's Kenny used to train his ass for like a whole year straight, y'all. Mr. Olympia title. He had he no abs, like no no six pack right there, man. But that didn't you know? stop him from getting like that, noticed no. by the no, entertainment look, industry. Look, in 1977, right he was look, cast in the TV series. The some people just just won't get that from genetics and became a muscle up cultural icon. He retired from bodybuilding in 1995, like a, uh, but he back. didn't stop They're working on himself. Much as they want, bro, they won't have no type of, of his body traps. up on social media recently, and showing off his crazy. incredibly trim physique. But can you guess how I like legs, he was even though I train legs hard. Maybe Genetics. 55 at a push? Try 67 on for size. The tone for most of his muscles might be gone, but he's still retained an incredibly built figure. Considering most men pushing 70 tend to look a little frail, Lou seems to be as Dang. fit as ever. Look 40. I guess you can take the guy out of the Hulk, but you can't take the Hulk out of the guy. Still Dorian Yates. Right there. Now, bodybuilders aren't just made in the US. Over the pond of the UK, Dorian Yates is a British bodybuilder who began training hard at the Electric age of 21. Podcast. And by 22, he'd won his first bodybuilding title. He was very at transparent. 10, I, I, with a top I like competing like weight of about 360 man. pounds. Dorian became well. But you, but you, IG influencers, man, who going around claiming y'all natural, and, and and you're not, and you know it. You know what I'm talking about. Stop it. Stop it. You are manipulating people to buy your product. I can sue you. <laughs> I'm not gonna look like you, bro. If you own a juice, whatever it is, just in a creatine, just admit it. We have more respect for you, bro. Seriously. Known for his unbelievably wide and thick back. From there, he swept up the winning spots of competitions all over the world holding an impressive six-year reign as Mr. Olympia from 1992 to 1997. But like many of the greats, this wasn't an all-natural effort. Before his very first competition, he, just like every other bodybuilder at the time, had started taking steroids and later dabbled with HGH. He grew to such an incredible Jeez. size that he weighed around oh 290 gosh. pounds in his off-season. 
He appeared to be in the best shape of his life, but then, six weeks before the 1997 Mr. Olympia, he was suddenly hospitalized. Anti-inflammatory medicines he'd been taking for a shoulder injury had caused him some serious internal bleeding, to the point where he was coughing up blood. Miraculously, he got over it, but then, three weeks out, he tore one of his tricep tendons oh, off man. the bone. Youch! He couldn't train, but he died it hard, and astonishingly, still won the title. What a beast! Resilient. Despite extensive surgery, his injury got worse, so he decided to retire. With his body's mechanics greatly impaired, he couldn't train like he used to, but that hasn't stopped him from staying fit. At 59 years old, Dorian has lost a lot of mass, but retains his fit physique through other forms of exercise like cycling and yoga. His muscles may not be as huge as they once were, but opting to look after his health rather than continuing to train through pain just for aesthetics is a really big move. Jean-Pierre Fuchs In the 1990s, Jean-Pierre Fuchs became a star on the international bodybuilding stage. Known as one of the early Ooh. mass monsters, the impeccable Swiss specimen made his debut Lance, in 1993. Boy and was competing as a professional bodybuilder just three years later. At his top competing weight, he hit the scales at an astonishing 260 pounds and was a rising star in the world. Oh, of look at that. <laughs> man, that's crazy, man. It's crazy, huh, y'all? But in 2002, at just 34 years old, he attempted a 675-pound squat for a magazine shoot that went horribly wrong. Ah. He fell down hard with the weights, smashing his knees onto the ground, leaving him with a severely injured left thigh and a tear to the ligaments on his right kneecap. Oh. He required surgery and was just about able to walk again, but the damage was done. After extensive rehabilitation, he attempted to compete again, but devastatingly didn't place in either of his 2001 or 2003 oh, events. Having his career cut short by such a freak accident was a crushing way to retire. But Jean-Pierre wasn't demoralized. Since then, he's continued to work out to the best of his abilities. Obviously, his legs are now a little thinner than they used to be, but he's maintained some of the upper body mass from his hair. all good. Yeah. Just don't wear shorts to the gym. You all good, player. Feel me? Yo. You feel me? In 2020, he underwent a knee replacement, which has certainly helped him stay fit and live a full life. So next time you make an excuse not to go to the gym, remember Jean-Pierre's story and do it for Fuchs' sake. Tom Prince You might not have heard of Tom Prince, but back in the 1990s, he was a very hard man to miss. He began to compete professionally in 1997, and by 2001, he'd managed to secure himself a spot on the main stage of Mr. Olympia. During the off-season, this mountain of a man weighed up to 312 pounds, but was able it, to cut that down to just 230 pounds when he competed. That's a weight loss of 82 pounds, almost the same as what an average 11-year-old child weighs. It sounds impossibly extreme, but it wasn't all natural. Tom admitted he used to use creatine. Use a mixture of steroids and diuretics, the latter of which are drugs that help rid the body of water, leading to some lean-looking muscles. And Just Tom about did made it look go on really on. good until he couldn't. After what turned out to be his final competition in 2002, Tom's kidneys began to fail. Many people assumed this was caused by his steroid use or the insane weights he'd been yo-yoing between. But after a kidney transplant in 2012 died after two years, Tom's doctors realized he was suffering from a blood condition called focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Considering it had destroyed called focal Vocal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. Yeah, what he said. Considering it had destroyed his kidney long after he'd stopped taking the drugs, he believes the condition is genetic. 
Today, at a much reduced 185 pounds, he still lives with a life- Oh, I thought it was a one guy on the right. <laughs> threatening illness and manages it carefully. But considering many other bodybuilders have lost their lives to severe kidney failure, Tom is definitely one of the lucky ones. Bob Paris Some bodybuilders really break boundaries, but Bob Paris managed this using more than just his immense size. He began competing back in 1981 shocking the bodybuilding community by winning both the Mr. America and Mr. Universe titles before hitting the professional leagues at just 23 years old. At 5'10", with an amazing 225-pound physique, Bob's top-quality genes propelled him onto the Mr. Olympia stage, where he placed in the top 10 over several years. He was one of the few bodybuilders at the time who was vocal about being against steroid use. But whether he actually practiced what he preached has been debated for decades. However, in 1989, he dropped a real bombshell on the press he bravely revealed he was gay. Nowadays, this wouldn't really be big news, but Bob was the very first active professional male athlete in any sport to come out to the media. And from then on, he was an icon in more than one arena. He retired from the sport in 1991 in order to chase his other dreams, like being an actor, model, and writer. Even though he doesn't train intensely anymore, he still likes to keep fit through other methods such as yoga. His physique now is so much slimmer, it's almost impossible to think he was ever a bodybuilder. I mean, he looks just like any other guy in the street. And can you guess how old he is now? 40? Maybe 50 at a push? Nope. 60? Dang. One. Whoa. I guess wow. I need to start practicing yoga. Frank Zane there are few men in the bodybuilding industry who command the absolute respect that veteran Frank Zane deserves. This man wasn't a heavyweight giant like Arnie, Ronnie, or Jay, but he still managed to claim a stunning three Mr. Olympia titles. Competing in the under 200 pounds category, physique. Frank entered at crazy least 25 physique. professional bodybuilding tournaments between 1962 and 1983. So this man was flexing it out before God. Arnie even had hairs on his chest. However, he always competed at around the 190 pound mark, as he claimed bulking up just never worked for him. As such, he gradually honed his body, competing in five Mr. Olympia tournaments before finally winning his first title in 1977. His reign lasted until 1979, after which an accident at his home saw him lose about 15 pounds of muscle mass. He still competed, but was never able to claim the coveted top spot ever again. He retired after his last show in 1983, Boy, still lean, but bro. he never... Like, bro, look, look at these bodybuilders now, bro. Like, 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 look at the abs, bro. Everything sucked in, bro. You know, they weren't on the HGH back then, bro. Like, you look at these bodybuilders now, I'm telling you, it's... it's, it's <sighs> it's crazy. Finally after his last show in 1983, but he never stopped working out. At 65 years old, Frank barely looked like he'd aged at all. The gray hair may have given him away, but just look at the tone Still of his crazy. thighs and chest. They wouldn't look out of place on a 30-year-old. By the age of 71, he was still sporting a set of That's massive guns. Like, bro, but time bro. comes for all of us. And at the admirable age of 79, Frank finally seems to have lost some amazing muscle mass. Even so, he still works out, educating the kids on Instagram on how to do proper dumbbell curls and inline curls. Damn, at around 80 years old, this guy still has better form than most 20-year-old <laughs> jacked-up gym bros. Well, I don't know about you, but... <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed the video. This right here was a great video of him, man. Um, just want to tell you guys, man, get in the weight room, y'all. It's, it's, it's like a whole nother dimension. It's like you step into another portal in life. You know, you're going to see things which you wish you should have seen prior before you stepped in the weight room. You know, it's almost like 
you on Grand Theft Auto, you typed in a cheat code, you know, and people gonna look at you different. You gonna feel different. You gonna, you just gonna, it, your your aura gonna be different. You know, the, your patience gonna be different. And what your level of focus is gonna be different. Trust me, y'all. Trust me. You know, cause uh, before I started lifting weights, I always had like a, like that urge, like you know, what can I do more? What can I do more? Like you know, but when I go to the weight room, it's it's my uh, sanctuary, man. And I'm I never want to let it go. Hopefully, I can inspire you guys to get in the room. See you guys next video. We out here. Everybody, give me a.